Hello, thanks for being in a new video. This time we have an unboxing of the Huawei MatePad Paper Matte Edition. In this case, it is the 11 inch model. Let's get started. Please remember that this is a special finish edition and it is available in addition to this 11 inch size in 11.5. So I also have the video of that other version in case you want to know it. In Mexico, the launch price of this model has been 10,999 pesos. On the screen you see the reference price in dollars. And at least here in Mexico, Huawei gives a very attractive promotion as it is giving you a watch, headphones and even a ceramic mug as a gift. So, there are several things that are included in this same price. I think that considering the whole package, it is a very interesting alternative. So, let's open this box to find the tablet. Here we have the tablet, this time in the black color. It looks great, with a matte finish, not only on the back cover but also on the front as you can see, it has virtually no reflections and that is one of its most attractive points. Notice. Let's consider what a traditional screen looks like and look at the level of reflections that it gets compared to this screen which has virtually no reflections at all. So that will obviously be its most attractive point since at least in my case I haven't seen other tablets with a similar screen finish. Let's turn it on and see what else comes in the box. We will find a cloth to be able to clean this screen more easily. This microfiber cloth is going to help us because if you try to clean that screen with any other cloth made of different materials, it's going to be much more difficult to remove the fingerprints. As you can see, the fingerprints get marked relatively easily, but it's also that easy to clean it with this cloth. Let's see what else comes in the box. It is 22.5 watts in power, so although it is a relatively fast charge considering the size of the tablet's battery, it is not expected to charge very, very, very fast. It also comes with paperwork of a lifetime, which we don't normally check much. Its cable is from USB-A to USB-C, so it's also a good cable. It's not too long, so I think you're going to have to be close to it. You're going to have to be close to a contact when you don't have a lot of battery life. And finally, we also include the stylus. And this is very much appreciated because at this price, it is generally not very common to see tablets that support stylus and much less that it comes included. So this is very much appreciated and it also comes with a replacement tip when the original tip has worn out. So here's what's included in the box. Let me put everything away and we'll take a look right at the tablet. I've got the tablet set up and now let me remind you of some of its specifications. We have a thickness of 7.2 millimeters, so it's considerably small and fortunately it does come with some pins on the bottom so you can buy the keyboard accessory separately in case you're interested. It also has a weight of 480 grams, so it is a very light tablet. The screen is 11 inches diagonally with a resolution of 2560 by 1600 pixels, giving a pixel density of 275, which for the distance at which one uses tablets I think gives us a good sharpness. Another strong point of the screen, besides the fact that it avoids reflections very well, is its refresh rate. Since it is capable of reaching 120 Hz, therefore all movements on screen will look very smooth and the truth is that the experience is completely good. In fact, it is a screen that offers us a very good level of brightness and also considerably good viewing angles, although possibly the only section that is more affected by the fact of being an anti-reflective screen will be the contrast since we are also talking about an IPS screen and not AMOLED, but either way I think the viewing experience is very good. It also gives us four speakers, two on the right side and two on the left side. It comes with 128 gigabytes of internal storage and you can also purchase cloud storage with Huawei Cloud. 
Also, it comes with 8 gigabytes of RAM, so in each of these aspects, I think it has very good specs. The front camera is 8 megapixels with f aperture 2.0. I think it's a good quality camera, albeit a little close. This picture is at the distance where one normally uses the tablet and this picture is with the arms outstretched so it's not an ultra wide camera and I think it's going to be much more noticeable when you're making a video call or recording some video because this is the perspective that you would get with your arms outstretched. So if you need to stretch your arms all the way out if you want to be framed properly. On the other hand, if you have your arms at a comfortable distance, I think it's too close to your face. So I think you're going to notice that little detail in video calls. The camera on the back is a 13 megapixel camera with f1.8 aperture and autofocus. Cameras on tablets will generally only be used for scanning documents and in this sense I think it delivers a good experience. In the camera interface as you can see it does include a document mode to be able to scan these types of sheets and it will automatically do the detection and cropping. In this case it was not a 100% accurate detection so I can readjust the area and then apply the changes. Obviously I can also print or export this document as a PDF so it can also facilitate file management. This camera will generally also be used to scan QR codes but it does not work from the automatic mode. So it has a button to access the AI lens function and through it we can scan this type of QR codes. The included stylus, as you could already see, sticks magnetically on the top. The tip should be pointing to the left and automatically sticking this stylus starts the wireless charging process. Recently Huawei has introduced its Notes app where it has good tools and also features cloud sync. Also you can adjust the cover page and paper style then we have very good features. This stylus is able to detect how hard you are pressing on it so you can have a different stroke. Also, the application can differentiate when you are using your finger or when you are using the stylus. And so you can also fully place your palm on top of the screen and there is not going to be any problem with the touches. So it is a considerably good application for taking notes and therefore this tablet becomes an interesting alternative for students. Finally, let's test the processor which is the Snapdragon 870. A very powerful processor that I think for this price comes very well, especially I think it will run very well the games compared to other alternatives of this same price. But let's wait until the end of the test to show the results. Here are the results. 1306 points in single core and 3271 points in multi core, confirming that it is a high end processor from years past but that today still maintains excellent performance. Now, with regard to Google applications, you are probably wondering how you are going to be able to use them here. Fortunately, in the app gallery, you will find access to practically all of them. Let me search for Google here, although these applications are not published directly by Google but by Gbox, which is an alternative. So if you are the most careful about your data and your security, I would recommend using a special account for these applications. Notice how I am going to install Google and first I am going to install Gbox. In addition to Google, while it is installing, I am also going to install Google Photos. I am also going to install Google Drive and I am even going to install YouTube. As you can see, all these applications are already installing and let's go to the main screen so you can see how each of them is already appearing. Gbox is the same as the other Google apps, but it installs automatically. So I'm going to wait until I finish installing all of them to show you how they open without any inconvenience. See that they are already installed. Let's open Google. The first time it will take a little longer because it is configuring everything you need from Gbox. So just wait a few seconds and after that the application will be ready for you to use it later with much more speed. As you can see there's the application and I could even select that I want to log in if I want to customize the experience. I'm also going to be able to access Google Drive and again the first launch takes a few extra seconds. At this point I'm already logged in and as you can see I can already access the files I have in Google Drive. So in summary if you can use virtually all Google applications although they do not come directly from Google but by Gbox. In fact, if you open Gbox, it gives you some suggestions to install other applications that use Google services. So for the moment, let's leave until here the video. If you liked it, you know you can indicate it and we'll see you next time.